insecure, not sure why You've got everything and they all wanna bite, bite Want so much more I, I know this is worth fighting for I, I guess I'll take a Welcome to a normal edition of the vlog It feels, feels like months since there's been a normal edition of the vlog I was up relatively early this morning, got up at 5 and was on the road at sunrise at 5.30, 5.45 and I wasn't even meeting someone, I'm riding by myself this early, I'm so proud of myself. Normally the only time I can get up at this hour is when I'm meeting someone. I'm back on the bike and not feeling too bad actually, feeling surprisingly okay. We'll see how long that lasts. It's been a pretty solid two weeks of no riding except for maybe one ride in the middle there. I just turned onto one of my favourite roads which runs out to the Dargal. Got some nice little climbs on it. This road out to the Dargle. What a weird word. Dargle. Uh, it has a nice shoulder. Road's in relatively good condition. It's not super busy, so it's definitely one of my favorites. It's mainly just farmland out here, which makes it quite quiet. Good That is the end of the road, time to head back. Solid 40 kilometers to here, so 80 k for the there and back. There's also a fair amount of elevation out here. Done about 700 meters of climbing in an hour and a half, which is not a crazy amount, but it's pretty decent. And altitude wise, I'm at almost 1300 meters. In Europe for that altitude, you'd be most of the way up a mountain. So what does my race calendar look like for the year? That, that is a very good question. Before I go into that, I want to explain something. If you are just doing your sort of local races like your P12s in the States or your Cat 1 races in the UK or your elite races, whatever they are, if you're just doing those races, as long as you have a license, you can just enter those races and, and race as an individual. So you can just make up your own race calendar. You can say, I want to race that race, that race, love that one, hate that hilltop finish, love that crit, whatever it may be, and you, you choose your own race schedule. If you're riding for a team, there might be certain obligations. You know, you have to do X race and Y race, but if you want to do something in your local town or one that's a couple hours away, you can still just add that to your calendar and, and, and go where you want. So really, you can make up your own calendar. The minute you start adding UCI races like UCI 1.2s and 2.2s basically like pro races then it becomes a lot more difficult because for those races you need to race as a team so if there's a race that your team is interested in they will contact the race organizer of that race and express interest in racing that race and say look this is my team this is what we've done etc etc and then it's up to the race organizers to choose which teams they're going to invite so in theory you could express interest in racing 10 or 15 UCR races but get zero invites. The race organizers will choose the teams according to their criteria. You know, they might favor a whole lot of local teams and then they might want a few international teams. They'll look at the makeup of the team to look for riders who are popular or have had good results in the year, whatever it may be, to really, to make, to make their race a good race. And it's at their discretion that you then get invited. So for a team to sit down in January and try and plan their schedule, there's really nothing concrete because you might be interested in four or five races in August, but you're not going to know for a couple of months whether you actually get into those or not. So it does make planning slightly difficult for the teams and the riders. You can sort of express interest in going to that race and, and plan around going to that race, but you don't know that you're going to get into it until a couple of months before. So last year, the lowest rates team found out, I think in September, that we would be racing the Tour of Rwanda in November. So we couldn't have planned on that race in January already. So as a rider, how do you plan your season? Well, 
what I do is I kind of look at the first half of the year, so basically up until June, and we look at the races which we're most likely to get into. We've got almost definite starts in the Grand Prix Saguenay, which is a UCI 2.2, and the Tour de Beauce, which is a UCI 2.2, because those are Canadian races held in Quebec, and the team is from Quebec. Your chance of getting into those races is, is, almost, is almost guaranteed. So those are two races which I really like, and, and that kind of suit my characteristics, and they're really big races in the region and really big races for the teams. So that is my initial focus of the season. Those take place in, in June and it is, it's nine days of racing in 11 days and I did that last year and I learned a lot of the Tour de Beauce and I'm actually really looking forward to going back to that race. So what I do is I say to my coach, look, these are, these are the important races and then we work back from there and I will add in some local races in the run up to those events that I think suit me or suit the timing or whatever it may be and I'll do those races in preparation for those really big targets. So I haven't really committed 100% to any races in the run up to Saguenay and Beauce yet. I have looked at the calendar and what I am thinking is in May, there's a race down in California I would love to do, which is the Redlands Classic, but that's also based on invites, and I tried to get into that race as a guest rider last year, and it is exceptionally difficult, so that's really massive long shot. And as a team, we're not heading down there to race in California. So I'm looking at the first sort of definite race will be towards the end of May, a, a hilly race in Canada called the, I think it's the Grand Prix Nordet or Norday or something like that. I'd really like to go back to the Killington stage race because that really feeds well into the the racing in Saguenay and Beauce. And then in July, there's a race called the Cascade Classic, which I've also, I'd love to do that race. A lot of climbing and at altitude. That race again is UCI 2.2, so that depends on invites and also if our team is interested in going or not. I don't know at this stage, but that's a race I would also really like to do. And if the team's not going, I'd definitely be trying to look for a, for a guest ride for that race as well. So really, the only concrete races I have in this at this time are sort of end of May and June. Um, I'll probably add some races in Europe, probably Spain or France in April and maybe even a couple in early May if I'm not able to race in Redlands. But those races I'll choose closer to the time and, and just make them fit into my, my schedule because really the focus will be those two Canadian races in, in the month of June. There is quite a bit of sort of planning on the go but usually you have enough time you know, six, eight weeks at the latest that you find out before you're racing and it does give you enough time to just polish up and prepare properly. That's tough, prepare properly, prepare properly, prepare properly. I got one of those bendy tripods for the camera, which is like super cool because you can mount it on like a chair like I just did and stuff. But the minute you're done and you're a little bit OCD trying to get these things straight again, it's hectic. It's a good like couple of minutes operation yeah, to get this thing straight. Oh, we have monkeys. There's monkeys on the roof, which means that all the doors need to be closed and the windows closed, otherwise they get into the house. Want so much more I 